everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Wow, Kansas City has experienced extreme cold and very heavy snow this past week. During such weather, remember to follow these tips to stay safe and to help make the city's snow operations run smoothly and efficiently. Avoid parking on city streets when it snows, but if you must, please park on the north or west side of the street only. If vehicles are parked on both sides of a narrow street, it may not leave enough space for a snowplow and that street might get skipped. Do not park on signed emergency snow routes. Vehicles parked on these routes may be ticketed or towed during snowstorms. View a list of emergency snow routes at kcmo.org snow. Please wait until the next business day after snow stops falling to call 311 about slick spots or missed streets. This allows snow removal crews time to complete multiple passes on assigned snow routes. Avoid driving during snow events and keep water and blankets or an extra coat in your car. Also keep your gas tank full. Make sure your vehicle has good tire tread to avoid getting stuck. And be a good neighbor and shovel snow and ice from any sidewalks on your property, whether residential or business, within a reasonable time after a snowfall. For more tips, visit the city's snow webpage at kcmo.org snow. City leaders, including Mayor Sly James and Council Members Jermaine Reed and Melba Curls, recently celebrated the grand opening of Aldi at 39th and Prospect. The grocery store is part of the 39th and Prospect TIF plan and provides fresh groceries to residents in the area which previously lacked access to fresh food. This has been a collaborative effort between local government, private industry, and um, people in the council, people in the community, in order to get something done and achieve a singular goal of community improvement. Yeah. Businesses don't go places where there's no chance to make some money. Right. 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 So, in addition to coming and shopping here, we've got to protect this store. This is our store. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there we go. All right, are we ready to go buy some groceries, y'all? Yeah. Let's go buy some groceries. The grand opening of Aldi is one of several major construction projects helping to revitalize Kansas City's east side. Others include the new East Patrol Campus and UMKC's Beacon Hill Student Housing Apartments, among others. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, this is Shannon with the Kansas City Parks and Recreation Department. Wedding season is in full swing and brides-to-be are looking for that perfect wedding venue. KC Parks has played host to hundreds of weddings through the years and we offer several wedding ceremony sites to choose from. Whether you want thousands of roses as your backdrop, as with our Loose Park Rose Garden, a unique pedestrian bridge where you can lock your love during the ceremony at the Old Red Bridge, or a beautiful iconic fountain such as the J.C. Nichols Fountain in Mill Creek Park, Kansas City Parks has 220 plus options from which to choose. If you want a secluded setting, Swope Memorial offers a beautiful site. Setting up on a cliff overlooking the entire park, it's a gorgeous venue with its large white granite columns and mature trees. If you would like an indoor-outdoor option, just in case of that unpredictable Kansas City weather, consider Shoal Creek Living History Museum in Hodge Park. With its beautiful rolling hills and church building, you will have that rain option at Shoal Creek. Kansas City is known for its beautiful parks and fountains, so why not incorporate your big day with a beautiful park location? For more information on KC Parks weddings venues, please visit our website, kcparks.org. For those of you recently engaged and starting to plan your big day, best wishes and congratulations. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, bringing you more news of upcoming shows and sporting events taking place at your city facilities. The Greater Kansas City Auto Show will be at Bartle Hall March 5th to 9th with more than 500 new cars, trucks, SUVs, crossovers, and minivans. Imagine yourself behind the wheel of fuel sipping hybrids, the highest end of the luxury market are rugged hard-working trucks. 
the 2014 Greater Kansas City International Auto Show is shaping up to be one of the best in our history. For more information, visit KansasCityAutoShow.com. The original Kansas City Home Show returns March 28th to 30th at Bartle Hall. It's been a Kansas City tradition for 66 years to welcome spring with the show, which is offered alongside the Flower Lawn and Garden Show. This show provides a wide array of new opportunities and choices for homeowners to get a jump on spring home and garden projects. Headlining the event is HGTV star Monica Peterson, interior design expert, HGTV dream home giveaway host and author of Make It Beautiful. For more information, go to kchba.org. Spring Madness returns to the Municipal Auditorium with both the MIAA and NAIA basketball tournaments in March. The Mid-America Intercollegiate Athletics Association, MIAA, will hold its Men's Basketball Championships at Municipal Auditorium March 6th through 9th. The conference's top eight regular season finishers will play in the championship tournament, which will be held in Kansas City for the 112th straight year. The event will attract thousands of fans over its three-day stretch. You can also attend the NAIA Division I Men's Basketball National Championship Annual Event March 19th through 25th. This is the longest continuous national collegiate tournament in any sport. These are just a few of the many events that Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offers our community. To learn about more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816 513-5000. There's an old joke. If a person who speaks two languages is bilingual, what's a person called who speaks just one language? An American. Well, that isn't necessarily the case with KCPD. Guten Tag, ich heiße Sigrid Frederick. Wie kann ich Ihnen helfen? من علی رضا آرامجو چطور می توانم به شما کمک بکنم؟ جینا لانگونی دتکتیو فرانک رورابا نیکوسایدی اجی. We have over 50 employees that speak two languages, everything from Spanish to Swahili, and we aren't talking just about being able to ask for directions. We spoke with human resource supervisor Renee Gatewood. Any department members that test and are on our bilingual call list do receive an incentive skill pay. You do have to be fluent and achieve a, a certain level of testing. We use a company called the Language Line, which is a spoken language testing service and they have people available that speak most every language that you can imagine and you actually do a, a verbal test over the telephone with them. If you pass the test and you're on the call list, you only have to test once every three years. If you don't pass, you can test every year. We do have a Spanish immersion program and several people that have gone through that program do come in and test and end up on our bilingual call list and receive the skill pay. We have people on the call list that speak Swahili, French, German, Farsi, Igbo, our communications unit keeps the list on hand and our bilingual employees seem to always drop everything they are doing to assist officers and the public whenever they're needed. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. In observance of the President's Day holiday on Monday, February 17th, city offices will be closed and trash and recycling pickup will be delayed one day. Residents who usually have pickup on Monday will receive it on Tuesday the 18th. Residents with Friday pickup should put out their trash on Saturday. The city's airport terminal advisory group has announced a series of public meetings to receive input on potential changes to Kansas City International Airport's terminal configuration. The meetings will take place on Monday, February 10th at Oak Park High School, on Monday, February 24th at the Mohart Center, on Monday, March 10th at Southeast Community Center, 
And on Thursday, March 20th at Johnson County Community College's Polsky Theater, all meetings will take place from 6 to 7.30 p.m. The proposed 2014 to 15 Kansas City budget has been submitted. It is now available on the city's open data catalog at data.kcmo.org. The public is invited to provide input and testimony on the proposed budget at three upcoming public hearings. Those hearings will take place on Saturdays from 10 a.m. through noon. The first is Friday the 15th at the KCPD Regional Police Academy Auditorium. Then on Saturday, February 22nd at the Robert Mohart Multipurpose Center Auditorium. And on March 1st at the KCPD South Patrol Division Auditorium. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org slash weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.